Hey, what is going on people? My name is Hellbent and welcome to Auto Hotkey mini tutorial number 15. In this one we're going to be looking at the chord mode option. So what this does is anytime that you use a command in Auto Hotkey that has to deal with coordinates, so whether you want to click at a specific location, uh, get the color of a specific location, search for a picture in a certain location, uh, get a the pixel color of a cer certain location, etc, etc. All of those use chord mode. Uh, as well as a few other things that I'm not going to dive into because that would make this tutorial too long. But this should get you the foundation of it. And then what I'd recommend you do is look at the auto hotkey documentation for chord mode. And that'll fill in any pieces that I miss in this. So let me explain what I have on the screen so that way you don't get too bo too worried about what's, what I have here. Uh, so all I've done is I've set up a little script and I've said... Uh, single instance force which means if the script is already running and I attempt to run it again it's going to close that older instance and run the new one without having to prompt me after that I've created a little window so that way we can use as a demonstration thing so I've set a window I've set it so that way it always stays on top I've set its background color and I've displayed it with a width of 300 and a height of 300 after that I've exited out of my auto execute area I've attached, created a label for GUI close, which automatically gets triggered if I hit this button. And I've also attached a hotkey so that if I do either of those things, press the hotkey or press the X button, it'll exit out of my script. Last, I have created another hotkey, number pad 1, and I've said if I press number pad 1, move my cursor to 0, 0. And then I've returned. Uh, for this mouse move thing here, um, if you have a monitor that has a very high resolution, this mouse move command might not work properly for you so if that's the case what you need to do is just go to the auto hotkey documentation for mouse move so just google search ahk mouse move and then go to the documentation page and you should be able to find a section that describes that if you have a high very high resolution monitor you can use a specific dll call instead so use the dll call in lieu of mouse move in this example for this uh tutorial um <clears throat> So, chord mode. Every time you use, like I said, anytime you use coordinates for something, so let's say pixel search, pixel get color, uh, image search, mouse move, click, mouse click, mouse click drag, uh, specify a location that you want to display, a tooltip, a menu, uh, get the coordinates where my carrot is, so this flashing thing that's right there. Anytime I use something like that, then they, the coordinates that I get or the coordinates that I'm in using are going to be related to something and the three things that they can be related to is they can be related to the screen so it doesn't matter which window I have active it's always going to be using the screen zero uh, the screens top left corner as zero zero so this is zero zero when it's the screen I can also specify for the active window so if this is the active window and I specify that I want to use coordinates relative to the active window then it's going to be whatever window is active and it's going to be the top left corner uh, this is one of the things there's a little caveat with this it's going to be you, if you read over the documentation for chord mode it'll clear things up but in certain circumstances it's not going to be exactly zero zero so just be aware of that uh, the last thing is the client area. So the client area is this inner area of my window and things, for example, if you're creating a, a GUI, um, any coordinates that I use here, so if I create a button and I say, I say um, position it at X100, Y, whatever, those are going to be re relative to the um, client area of the window. <clears throat> Once again, here's a little caveat. Um, if you have a GUI with a menu in it, so if I had a menu at the top of it, then the client area actually starts after the menu. So, for example, this window here, it has a menu. The client area would start after that menu. So, after this line right here. So, how do you use it? So, for most of us, for most of you, all you need to do is up at the very top of your script in the auto execute area, so that's anything up until the first return or until the first hotkey. So anything up before that is your auto execute area. So up in your auto execute area, right up near the top is probably the best. Just type out chord mode. And then what you you want to use, so like I said, there's different commands. So anything that deals with your mouse movements or mouse getting the position of your cursor or anything, cl sending clicks or anything like that, those are gonna, you're going to want to set for mouse. Um, if you're doing pixel search or, or um, 
pixel get color or image search, you're going to want to set it for your pixel. If you're doing for tooltip, set it for tooltip, etc. So I'm going to just, since our example is using mouse move, I'm going to set it for the mouse. And then what I want it to be relative to. If I don't specify anything, so if I didn't add this line at all, there's a default value. That default value is any coordinates I use are going to be relative to the active window. So even if I don't use chord mode, it's going to be relative to the active window. So I, I've seen on the AutoHotKey forums, this topic comes up time and time and time again. It's one of the, I'm not going to, I, I'm, I definitely wouldn't say it's one of the most, it's, it doesn't show up the most on the forums, but it's, for a specific topic, it comes up over and over and over again. So somebody somebody will create a script. They'll say, uh, I want to click at whatever location. I specify the location. I run the script. It works fine for most of the time. And then all of a sudden, it starts get going all haywire. It starts doing things that I don't expect it to do. And that's because they haven't specified the chord mode. So they're like, it'll be default to the window. So if this is, if they have it, if they say, I want to click here, they they type out their command, whatever, click at that location, and they run it, and it, oh yeah, it works perfectly. But then they might activate another window, try running it again, and all of a sudden it's clicking over here. It's not clicking over here, it's clicking over here, and they just don't get it. So that's that's what it is. It's chord mode. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll just go through them all and see what the difference is. So I'm going to set first to uh, window, which is default. So even if I didn't type it in this, it would be the exact same. So if I hit number pad one, it's going to attempt to move to zero, zero on my window. If I set it to the client area, then run it again. It should move it to the top left corner where that black starts. And that's what it did. And if I set it relative to the screen and run it again, then it moves it up to the top left corner. So depending on what your script is doing, what you want it to do, how you want it to act, you set it to, to those. If you're using things, the commands like pixel search, pixel get color, etc., what you're probably going to want to do is set both. You're going to probably want to set two lines, one for mouse and one for pixel. And that's because, generally speaking, if you find a pixel, if you're doing pixel search or whatever, you're generally going to want to get the coordinates of your cursor as well or send clicks to that position or whatever. That's that's a, f a common thing that you're going to do. Okay, so that covers what, you, what it's for and how to use it. Now let's go into some other things that you might not expect or some some ways that you can use it. So most of us, we're only going to use it for one thing. Like our script is only going to have... We can set chord mode once, and then that's it. Well, sometimes you might be use, creating a script where you sometimes want to use it for the screen, the mouse position or pixel position, be relative to the screen, but other times perhaps you want it to be relative to the client area, or et cetera, et cetera. So what you can actually do, and what I'll do is I'll add in another hotkey, is you can specify, so let's say, this is the main action of my script. So this, it's going to perform this action here millions of times, hundreds of times, tens of times, whatever. But then perhaps once it's going to need to get a coordinates or a pixel or whatever once for a different something that's relative to something else. So maybe the screen. So maybe most of the time I'm active, my, my script deals with the window, but then all of a sudden for one, one command, I need it to be relative to be rel uh, relative to the screen. So in here, I can type out chord mode again and do, let's say, mouse, and I can make it screen and then do the same thing again where I'm moving to zero, zero. And because, <clears throat> because I'm using this, after the auto execute area, because this is after the auto execute area, when I go back to using this one again, it's still going to use what I had up here. So whatever I put, whatever I set it in the auto execute area or the area that is before the first return or first hotkey, it's going to remember that. And then if I use, if I set it somewhere else in my script after the auto execute area and it executes after the auto execute area, then it's only going to work 
in this place. So for example, here, I set it to be relative to the screen. So this is going to move up here. If after I've executed this hotkey here, and then I go and execute this one, this one is still going to use what I had set it up here. So let's do this. So if I hit number pad one, oh, this is, I want it this, for this demo, I want it to be window. My bad. I, I don't need the pixel. Um, just so you know, the pixel, here's an example of using pixel. So this script here, when I hit this get color button, it's going to tell me that it's going to get the position of my cursor relative to the screen, so 0, 0. And it's also going to get the pixel that's under at that location. So it's going to get my position, and then it's going to use that position to get the color. So now if I move my cursor around, it tells me whatever color I have. It doesn't matter which window I have active, it's going to get that color. Okay, so that's just an example of that. Um, so I think I have this set up again. So let's go. So if I hit number pad 1, it's going to use the window to move my cursor to 0, 0. So this is the active window. Now this is the active window. Now this is the active window. Now if I hit number pad 2, it's going to use the screen. So regardless of which window I have, and it's going to move to there. Now, if I go back to using my first hotkey, which doesn't have any line in it that specifies the, that I'm changing the chord mode again, so I've, I've here I've changed the chord mode, but here I'm not setting the chord mode, but it's still going to use whatever I set up at the top of my script. And there you go. Two, one, two, one, two. All right. Something to keep aware of, though, is let's say I have a function... And in that function, I'm doing the same thing that I'm doing here. But then I call up this function inside my auto execute area. Then what's going to happen is because this is going to be the last thing that it sees while it's still in my auto execute area, it's not going it's going to switch this with this. So if I hit, so now it, it when I ran the script, it's going to move my cursor automatically. So because it did that, because it's changed, it's using this chord mode in here, it's set this chord mode in here, which is still technically in my auto execute area because it happened before this first return. Now when I hit number pad one, it's not going to be set to the window. It's going to be set to the screen. And there you go. Oh, oh, I guess I should activate the window to show it there. So now all of them are being relative to the screen. So that's just something you got to keep a, be aware of. But like I said, most of us, most of you, are only going to need to set chord mode once in your script. And the best way to do it is up at the top of your script. Uh, a common, I'll do one last thing before we go. A common thing that I see is somebody will will go there, they'll say, hey, I, I want my script to click at this location, but then all of a sudden it starts acting weird, right? So they say, I want it to click at 100. I'm expecting it to be here, but then all of a sudden it starts clicking over on somewhere over here. Well, <clears throat> then you'll say to them, okay, you got to set chord mode up at the top of your script. One of the <laughs> things that happens a lot, a lot, is this is what they'll do. They'll do this. All right? This right here is in between two hotkeys. So this hotkey starts and then it has its return so it's exited and then I have this new hotkey that starts and it has its exit and then in between them I have this I've set this chord mode. Well this code is never going to get executed. It's never going to get executed. Oh, let me. So don't do this. Don't do this. Put Either put it inside your hotkey like this or better yet just put it at the top of your script in the auto execute area. The auto execute area, one last time, is anything before the first return or the first hotkey. That's your auto execute area. All right, anyways, that is it. 15 minutes, damn. Oh well, I'm rusty, whatever. So sue me. These are free, whatever. All right, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed.
Uh, leave a like if you did. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.